Twelve.com. I love all of them, Secret Twelve included. We're going to go ahead and now talk to Old Man Bill, only because he has the best call-in name. Old Man <laughs> Bill, what is on your mind? Hello, gentlemen. Um, I actually just got off of work and got on to the Infowars store, and it's pretty exciting. Um, I know you have the uh, Hillary for Prison uh, on sale for 10 bucks. So. Yeah, it's nine ninety. I forgot to mention that, actually. Thank you. The Hillary for Prison shirt, which is normally like $20, Alex actually decided to reduce that to nine ninety five. It's a loss leader, which means he makes no money on it. He actually loses money on it. So if you want to get that, your support is appreciated. If you want to get it with some other products so he actually makes money from the money bomb, that would be great too at InfoWarsStore.com. The Hillary for Prison t-shirt that Joe was talking about is $9. So he's pretty much making no money on that and losing money because it's free shipping. Everything at InfoWarsStore.com is free shipping. So he's paying for the shipping. He's paying for the shirt. It's nine dollars, but it's an awesome shirt, and maybe pick up some other stuff too. But sorry, go ahead, uh, old man Bill. Or can I call you Bill for short? Um, actually, you guys came up with that. Whoever screened it, it's pretty funny. Call me whatever you want. Um, but uh, yes, yeah, so I'm excited about the shirt. I found there a great way to get the message out there. I wear the 911 one a lot, and you forget when you have it on, and you know you go through the day and you're like, why are so many people coming up? Oh, you know. So a lot of people will see you wearing it. They come up. So uh, I really recommend the shirts. Uh, so anyway, I forgot what I was calling. Oh, the product. Oh, uh, Alex is always saying not to thank you guys, but I just want to give a special shout out because a year ago I called in and uh, you were talking about mainstream media. Alex was the only one that would share my story. Um, I was a stay-at-home dad. Uh, I was all organic, cloth diapers, uh, married a wealthy woman, uh, and then I caught her having an affair with a cop. So uh, Alex was the only one that shared it. He showed me that there's a feminist issue with that. Uh, so I have to thank him for that. Well, also, thank you, man. Thank you for calling in. And thanks for listening to the program and all the nice words and supporting the InfoWars Money Bomb 2015. And now, you know, the time is up for me. Uh, David Knight's going to come in with some breaking news and some interesting information on the Republican debates. Dr. Rob Group, thank you so much. For thanks for having me on. Thanks for having hours. me on. David's going to come in. He's going to cover the Republican debates. He's going to break down some more news. I'm Anthony Gucciardi. Thanks so much for your support in the InfoWars Money Bomb. InfoWars.com forward slash Money Bomb. In my arms. Yeah, it's Alex Jones, baby. All right. Infowars.com, which had its humble beginnings as a small website attached to Alex Jones's radio and access TV shows, has become the leader in alternative news and information. And through the years, Alex has taken the financial support provided by listeners of the radio show, readers of the website, viewers of his DVD documentaries, and freedom lovers all over the world and reinvested that support back into the Infowars news operation. With your support, we've expanded our offices, built studios, hired reporters, video editors, writers, other support staff, and created the premier alternative news network. You made this possible with your support, and we sincerely thank you. The time has come to expand once again, and this time we want to literally launch InfoWars.com into space. That's right, we're launching our own satellite broadcast signal to cover all of North America, and we need your help. But first, let us show you how it works. Shows are created live, like the Alex Jones Show, or pre-produced, like the InfoWars Nightly News in HD. These shows are launched according to the atomic clock, and the HD signal goes through a closed caption data embedder, which sends a signal to a closed captioning service, and they begin the process of adding text to the screen. This is done in real time, and it is mandated by the FCC. The signal then goes to an MPEG transport streamer, which sends a signal to a satellite uplink facility. They blast the signal from the uplink satellite to the stationary satellite position to cover all of North America. The satellite is named SES-3 and run and maintained by the largest satellite distribution network, SES, which maintains a global satellite infrastructure to reach 99% of the planet's population. The satellite sends a signal back to Earth where it is available to thousands of local television stations. It's also available for free to anyone who owns a C-band satellite dish pointed at 103 degrees west. Using a receiver, they can tune to 3,740 megahertz vertical and receive our broadcasts on channel 11. There are over 2,200 TV stations in the United States, hundreds in Canada, 
and another 1,200 in Mexico that could potentially receive this free-to-air broadcast. Each one of these local stations is able to grab the satellite signal and broadcast it to millions of homes in North America, potentially to over 400 million people. There is an enormous cost in buying and maintaining the equipment, paying for the satellite bandwidth, and the cost of closed captioning service. The monthly service fees alone total nearly $40,000, which is why we're crowdsourcing InfoWarriors all over the world to help us reach our goal of $1 million, which will allow us to reach 400 million people. It's called Operation Money Bomb 2015. Imagine being able to reach 400 million people who are victims of mainstream media mind control. The ones who still believe in the left-right paradigm, enforced drugging, water fluoridation, and the plan of divide and conquer. Your support will allow us to help these people break free of their mental shackles, help bring about a peaceful revolution, and restore our republic. If you're able to help us financially reach our goal, then log on to InfoWars.com forward slash money bomb and contribute what you can. But there's another way to help that will not cost you anything. Go to InfoWars.com forward slash money bomb, download our informational packet, email it to your local television station, then follow up with a phone call to ask the station to carry the Alex Jones Show and the InfoWars Nightly News. Everyone can join in, and we cannot prevail unless we have your help. So please, log on to InfoWars.com forward slash Money Bomb today and help us make Operation Money Bomb 2015 a resounding success. Your support will help us reach 400 million people. I'm David Knight for InfoWars.com. Thank you for watching Operation Money Bomb 2015 and for your support. Being satisfied with laser weapons that are both invisible and silent, companies like Boeing have announced that they're going to be taking their laser weapons to the next level. Previously, operators have had to pay close attention to know exactly when they've been firing these silent but deadly weapons. Now their lasers will be equipped with Star Trek and Star Wars sound effects. So next time Boeing's high energy laser mobile demonstrator shoots down a drone mid-flight, it's going to sound exactly like Han Solo's blaster. But that isn't all that science fiction has influenced. In addition to cell phones and ion propulsion and handheld devices, Star Trek and Star Wars have also influenced futurists like Ray Kurzweil. Kurzweil is once again repeating his prediction that humans will meld with computers in the future. But instead of 2045, Kurzweil is now suggesting cyborgs will be a reality by the 2030s. The director of engineering at Google said that people will soon be able to connect their brains directly to the cloud and augment their existing intelligence with thousands of computers. Thanks to DNA nanobots making the connection, our thinking will become a hybrid of biological and non-biological thinking. Kurzweil adds that by the early 2040s, people will be more like machines than they will be human. And he even suggests that we'll be able to back up our brains like a hard drive. But guess what? Star Trek already conquered this territory in the 90s. I am the Borg. The cyborg represents the dark side of humanity, what happens when technology falls into the wrong hands and is used to dehumanize us. The Star Trek Borgs became one with their technology that stripped them of their humanity and their individuality. They became like zombies in a metal shell. They were now part of a collective network on a vast computer system controlled telepathically by this mysterious Borg queen. Kind of makes you think there's a possibility something could be telepathically controlling us if we ever were to upload our brains to the cloud, as Kurzweil suggests. Assimilate this. And even though we hear the word singularity by 2045, the fact is man merging with machine has already happened. Professor Kevin Warwick is head of the cybernetics and robotics department at Reading University in the UK. In 1998, he was able to connect his nervous system to the internet via a chip implanted in his arm. He then used the web to allow him to control a robotic arm. And that was in the 90s. And he, like Kurzweil and other transhumanists, 
give this ominous warning that by not upgrading, we would be considered subspecies in the future. And surprise, surprise, artificial intelligence is one of the topics up for discussion at this year's Bilderberg Conference. Former DARPA director and now Google exec Regina Dugan will be in attendance. Dugan is helping to develop and promote the idea of an ingestible identification microchip. Yeah, absolutely not worrisome at all that Google is now hiring military leadership. Users would swallow a chip in pill form every day in order to obtain the superpower of of having their entire body act as a biological password for cell phones, cars, doors, and other devices. But I'm sure it means absolutely nothing that artificial intelligence will be discussed this week at a top secret meeting of the world's power brokers when people like Elon Musk and Stephen Hawking have warned that artificial intelligence has the potential to destroy humanity if it falls in the wrong hands. I have one simple request. And that is to have sharks with frickin' laser beams attached to their heads.